ਉਹ ਤੋਂ ਇਹ ਆਪਾਂ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਮਨ ਮਰ ਗਿਆ ਨਾ ਕਾਲ everybody we like to welcome you to another evening of god given rights we are very happy that you have joined us wherever you're joining us from uh anyway inside this beautiful jewel called belize or uh, abroad anyway throughout the world wherever we're happy that you have joined us and we just want to remind you that we are on facebook youtube central cable vision and channel 98 okay so please, we want to encourage you to share with friends, family, neighbors, and let them know we have another awesome night uh, coming your way. We also want to remind you that we have our phone number that you can text in, give your, ask your question, give your suggestion. Uh, the phone number is 613-9351. 613-9351. I have my co-host with, with me, none other than our president of our Central Belize Mission, Pastor Jillit himself. Good evening. Thank you for joining us, Pastor. A pleasure. I hope you had a good day today. Excellent. All right. Praise the Lord. And we have again with us no stranger to this show. Uh, he has become one of our main speakers. Well, he was here last week. Uh, attorney at law, Norman Rodriguez. Yes. 
Good night, Mr. Dawan, and good night, Pastor. Looking forward to another wonderful night. Yes, thank you for joining us tonight. Okay. Yes, and we want to move into our program, but we can't start anything if we don't invite the presence of God in our midst. Okay? So, uh, I'm going to ask, I'm going to put you on the spot tonight. Will you pray for us, please? Yes, sure. Let us pray. Father, as we embark on another meaningful night, dear God, we invite you to be with us, dear God, to lead us, to teach us, and those who are listening and watching, dear God, just to be your leader, dear God, so that at the end, dear Father, the things that we may say or do will always be to your honor and glory. In the, in the Son's most precious and holy name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. Uh, Brother Norman, before we move into business, uh, tell us a little about yourself, sir. We have invited you on this show, but we have never really gotten a uh, little uh, bio bio biography, sorry, of who you are, where you came from. Um, briefly, um, I think I have one of, on one of my social media page, the introduction that I'm just a plain guy trying to live a righteous life and preparing for that day when I will be a part of that great gift of salvation that God offers. Yes, but um, I was born in the, on the Stanford Valley Road and I moved to Belize and when I was 14 and the challenge began, really began then. I've been footing it alone with God since then. And I didn't become a statistic. I went through high school, Belize in the secondary school number one, Belize mm -hmm. College for Cedar Secondary, Belize Technical College, University College of Belize, you know it as UB now. <laughs> yeah. That was some time ago. Yeah. And finally I went to Guyana to do two years of uh, uh, um, studying law to earn my LLB and later on to Norman Manley. All of that has brought me to this point. Um, like I said most there, I'm just trying to ensure that I earn salvation. Okay. So you're a South man. South man, yeah. Man from the South, San Creek Valley, you said. Valley right? Road, seven miles. Okay, where are they? The sweet oranges they come you from. You don't said it, yep. All right. <laughs> I know Pastor Dillard is a lover of the South as well. He was down there for a while, and I've been there for a while, uh, pastoring as well. Well, uh, let's get into our discussion for tonight. Last week, to those who are just joining us, we were looking at uh, the, um, the Constitution of Belize. Uh, and specifically, we were looking at the vaccine since last week they came in, and just today, just today, a uh, medical professional sent me a text asking me what was my stand, my opinion on the vaccine. They are hesitant, and they don't know what to do. They have put it off, and they are asking my advice what to do, all right? So we find out that people still have questions, they are not comfortable, all right? Uh, is it their constitutional right? I believe that, firstly, I believe that people are afraid because they're not sure what the side effects will be. And you know that, I believe that there's always this fear and the wider world that some of these vaccines are designed to purge the world's population. Oh. You never know what it is. Um, and that is as a result of the evil that is in the world. But, like I explained last week for those who may be seeing it for the first time and hearing us, that there is no law in place that makes it mandatory to oh. take the vaccine. It will probably come, it may come, because I've heard teachers and some nurses and so on discussing that are talking about the little pressure that they're under. That should not scare them at this point. But if the government does decide to enact laws to make it a must, then they will not have a choice because there will be penalties. And I did go back last week. I, I talked about the, the SIs that were enacted or, or yes, legislated, um, where eventually the, the 
forced the business owners and the shopkeepers and so on to ensure that the employees and those going into the stores that they had to use masks and, and, and sanitize and so on because people were not really following the, the, the requests at that point. But when it became law, if the business owners and uh, governing bodies for organizations did not put certain things in place, then they would have been charged and taken to court and fined. In fact, at one point it was so bad that, that you could have gone to prison for not obeying the, the law, the curfews and so on. Curfew law, sorry. Okay. Thought so? Okay, well, uh, there are a number of things. And I would want to approach uh, the topic from, from using a, a thought from the father of the nation and, of course, a thought from the scriptures. Um, at one point, the father of the nation, George Price, said, we are going through difficult times, a transition, if you will, in the end, if we trust in our religion and persevere, good will triumph over evil. In his evaluation of, uh, of Belize and, and the world, I, I, I would extend it, um, he realized that there would always be challenges. There would always have to be decisive moments. When, when people would have to decide what they do. And it would seem that his mantra was to trust in his religious beliefs and, of course, to persevere. And, of course, he had the conviction that good would triumph over evil. I believe that we must, ultimately, as citizens, we must trust in God. And if there was ever a time when we needed to depend on God, to seek God, to ask God for wisdom, because remember, our, our, our minds are, are, are subjective minds. And the most important subjection for us is to God. But I like what Daniel and his friends, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, said when they were facing a difficult time. They said, If our God, whom we are serving, exists, he is able to rescue us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will rescue us, working from your power as well. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we don't serve your gods and we will not pay homage to the golden statues that you have erected. Ultimately, our allegiance has got to belong to God. Ultimately, that's where we must, where the buck must stop. So I, I believe that no more than ever before, people need to base their decisions on, on God's word. And of course, in seeking wisdom from God. And, and that, 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 that is where I would want to start. I think people should be praying and asking God for guidance as they, as they, as they look at the, I understand another 25,000 came in today, as the vaccines come into the country, you know, uh, people need to be praying. That's how I would approach it. You know, I, I, I on the Facebook page, I see there is a war presently. Uh, in social media with the, the church have given its stance on this vaccine. But there are individual members who believe otherwise. And you find out that they start criticizing the leadership. They start criticizing the church and stating their personal belief when it comes to that. So even within the church, you find out that there are questions, uncertainty, all right? But I like your response, and I believe it's going to be something personal between us and God. Right. But allow the Lord to lead you. 
let the Lord impress you on what to do and go with the still small voice and the principles that he established. And we must be reminded that while it, it will be a personal decision, I believe up to a certain point, that's a suggestion. We have to remember that we live in a society, as is every society in the world, where we are governed by laws. And the people who are leading in government, they have the, as people would say, power to enact laws. So that personal choice that we can enjoy at this point may be taken away by a simple stroke of the pen. I like where Pastor Gillis started because he subscribed to the words of God, and rightly so. Because in Acts 5, chapter, chapter 5, verse 29, it is said that Pete, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, mm -hmm. We ought to obey God rather than men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the Constitution is said to be the supreme laws of belief. Any other law that goes against the Constitution, to the extent of that law as it says, right, is not valid. You don't have to subscribe to it. And again, in the beginning of the preamble, where it says, whereas the people of Belize, and you mentioned it last week, Pastor, A, <coughs> affirm that the nation of Belize shall be founded upon principles which acknowledge the supremacy of God. Mm -hmm. Again, <coughs> it tells you that if you are required to do things that cause against godly principles, then as Peter said, you must choose to obey God <coughs> rather than men. And I want to mention that the true father of this nation advised, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. This is 1 Peter 2.13, I'm going all the way up to 15. For the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of mm -hmm. foolish men. Now, where does that put us when it comes to taking a vaccine? Right now we have a choice. Mm -hmm. The laws will come. You will have to decide, and that depends on how grounded you are in God's word or in knowledge of God. You will have to determine if that goes against God's will or God's word and make a decision. Because right now, you can make a choice and there's no punishment. But the time may come when you will choose and you will be punished for it. Understand. No, we have all... We, we, there's another thing that we, you know, we have to understand. And I, and I think, first of all, we have to remember that we have always had viruses. All right? So it's not, it's not anything new. All right, and viruses, while they have always attacked people, it is also true that not everybody, because for example, when we had that first terrible, um, what they call the Spanish flu back then, you know, um, it is true that a lot of people died, but, they were, but it did not kill out the whole population of the world. So, it, the, the fact is, the virus doesn't have to kill me. But the virus can kill you. And it can kill a number of us. So, we have to have that clear in our mind. I, I, I think we need to have it clear in our minds, the facts about these things. That's one. One fact. Two. Um, if, though, if not everybody is destroyed by the virus... Then it means that there are things that people are doing that are good and that are right. So, if you are doing certain things and you are taking care of yourself, don't stop doing those things. That's the second truth. There's also a third truth. A third truth is that 
we have been given certain protocols. All right? Wearing of the mask, sanitizing, physical distancing. Mm -hmm. All right? Being careful, generally speaking, of what we do. If we continue to follow those facts and taking care, it may very well be. I mean, let's face it, right now, we do not have, we are just beginning to get vaccines in this country. And in the abs even in the absence of vaccines, we have so many of our people who have not been affected. It's important for us to, to, to know the good, to build on the good that we have had, and of course at the same time, like the council is so, so right in saying, uh, uh, you know, and that we, we then wisely, carefully, uh, prayerfully determine what we're going to do. I would hope that the time never comes, Council, when a law has to be passed to require that everybody take the vaccine. I would hope that we all would so take care of ourselves that that never has to be. So far, it has not been done in America. And I don't know if there is any country where a law has been passed. Maybe the Council is more up to date on that. But so far, I don't know that there is any. So it may very well not happen. And that would be so good. Because at the end of the day, not even God, and this is the point I want to conclude it, not even God obligates any of us to do what he says, even those things which we should do. So this is a program of God-given rights. Ultimately, it is everybody's right to decide what they will do with this vaccine. Okay. So just before we move into our break, um, there was a question that... You wanted to say something? There was a question that we asked last week uh, concerning... And you brought up a very good point concerning us. Um, even though we have our rights, we need to be careful that we are not trampling on the rights of others. Mm -hmm. All right? It's right there in the Constitution, and I've always pointed it out to people because people are going to assert rights. You see it up practically every day on the TV when things happen. They talk about, oh, I have rights. But one of my lecturers at the University of Guyana did point out to us with rights come responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I use the illustration that if I'm in my own little room, my own little space, I don't have to worry about the rights of any others in that space because it is my little space. But the moment somebody else comes into that space, then my rights become limited. And I said to someone today, the same constitution that guarantees and protects rights of every individual can take away or limit mm -hmm. that those rights that those people enjoy. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that we can overcome. And until we draw our minds to the understanding that my rights are not, it, it, it is hard to be absolute. Because the moment I step out of my small little space, I will step into or near to the space of others. Mm -hmm. and my actions, my words, even my non-actions, right, can impact the, those other people's rights. Okay, very good point. Okay then, we'll take a break. We'll be right back. We ask you to stay with us. All right, don't go far. Remember to share. We'll be back in a few. It's here. It's here. It's finally here. Adventist Television Network is here, the one-stop network for Christians or anyone wanting to learn how they can develop a more meaningful relationship with Christ. Tune in to Central Cable for daily programs on health and wellness, current events, relationships, spiritual growth, and of course, 
musical praise, all catering to our local urban audience. The book of Revelation depicts God's people as flying in the midst of heaven as angels, proclaiming the everlasting gospel. ATN will allow you to reach the world with God's message and reap the harvest. But more, it will help you to grow as a disciple. It will keep you connected with your church. Above all things, it will prepare you to meet Jesus when he comes. ATN is a non-profit initiative. If you want to do your small part in reaching people with the good news of Jesus, you can partner with ATN by offering your generous tax deductible gifts. Adventist Television Network is an official partner of 3ABN's Dare to Dream Network. Keep up with special services, programs, and events brought to you by the local Seventh-day Adventist Church on Central Cable and streaming on Central Belize Mission Facebook and YouTube pages. Brothers and sisters, we are looking forward for your financial support for the Adventist Television Network. ATN and Dare to Dream, the Urban Christian Lifestyle Television. These are indeed troubling and uncertain times. The COVID-19 pandemic rages while the death toll surges. Many lives have been lost to violence in the streets. Homes have been terrorized with domestic abuse. Natural disasters in the form of storms and fires have devastated our land. A constant reminder of the times in which we live. Jesus is soon to come. Here in the Belize Central Mission, our mandate remains the message to all the world in the midst of all these tragedies we have not relented from our mission of preaching evangelism and ministering to our youth and community the central belize mission has been blessed to reach great milestones to this end including the launch of our very own adventist television network which now serve as one of the mediums in carrying the gospel to all the world. ATN has allowed us to continue this work by streaming various spirit-filled programs via its Facebook and YouTube account, as well as on cable TV. This has allowed many individuals to have come into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ through the virtual evangelistic campaigns and revivals. As we contemplate these breakthroughs, we want to encourage everyone, whether you are a regular member, visiting online viewer, or a community member, to double up with God in your Christian stewardship. God has been faithful to us and His mercies are renewed each day. We may have fallen short in our faithfulness in the giving of our time, talent, or finances, but now is an opportune time for us to double up with God. Let's double up with Him by returning what is right in tithes and in our love gift offerings. Contact your local church pastor or church treasurer to find out how you can give. If you have been blessed by the ministry at ATN and would like to partner with us, you can join the ATN family by giving your charitable gifts. Giving to ATN can be done in multiple ways. On your ties envelope, there is a designated line for ATN. You can place your donations along with your ties and offering. Sign up to become a monthly or a one-time sponsor using the ATN donor pledge form that is provided in a pinned post on our Facebook page. After you sign up, we will contact you to make arrangements of how you can make your donations. You can mail your checks to House B Upper Flat 374 Mayflower Crescent Lake Garden Ladyville Village Police District or drop by our studio on weekdays Mondays to Thursdays between 9 to 5 p.m. at our ATN office or Central Belize Mission office. You can also make direct transfers marked for ATN via online banking or in-person deposits to the following bank account number. For our international donors, you can make your donations via the PayPal app or by sending donation to BZ Adventist TV by means of the following link. 
using your PayPal account or your credit and debit card. Thank you for your generosity and we pray God's richest, most abundant and continuous blessings on you and on the Belize Adventist Television Network as we seek to engage in meaningful, relevant and life-changing ministry in today's world. Okay, welcome back. Thank you for joining us with our second half of our program. We just want to remind you, we are on Facebook, YouTube, please share. We are also on Central Cable Vision and Channel 98. We have a phone number that you can text and give a comment, ask your question, and 613-9351. Okay? As we move into the second part of our discussion for this evening, uh, we just want to remind you we have our host, Pastor Leslie Gillett, and also our guest, uh, Attorney at Law, um, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay? So Rodriguez, you started uh, before we went on the break, making a point. Would you like to continue that? I, yes, before I continue, I have to really commend this effort to educate the Adventist community in Belize. Because we have some Yes, that is true. Um, I, I think, and I and I really, I really will hope that they, you know, we, we have a tendency in this country to wait until something is upon us mm -hmm. to then quick think quick and react even faster, right? Uh, and I, I, I really believe. And by the way. No, I'm going to get into trouble now, but I'm going to make a statement here. I don't believe that any Christian in his or her right mind will go that route. Christians will in a timely manner educate themselves, study these things, do their evaluation and their praying and everything, and come to a very rational decision right and and uh, that's what they should and like I said I believe Christians will do having said that then I would hope that I would have hoped that you would have had a, a, a dozen comments and maybe 20 odd questions tonight <laughs> you know because this is the time for for us to have the dialogue. We, we know that the first, I think it was the first thousand came. Then now we have gotten 25,000. So it's here. Mm -hmm. Like, like uh, the commercial <laughs> for the station says, it's here, it's here, you know. The, 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 the virus has been here for, with us for a year. Now the vaccine is here. So it's time for us to come face to face and to deal with the matter. And yes, 
I like what the attorney says because he said that my space is that's the constitution protects my space but the moment I share my space or I extend my space to somebody and I begin to get too close to somebody else's space then the government will have to come in because that's their role they will have to come in and they will have to determine what needs to happen with us because it's no longer me or you it's us now because our spaces have begun to either be too close or we are beginning to share our spaces so um and, and that we have to understand and we cannot blame we cannot blame governments because at the end of the day they are god's agents we have studied we have we have said that and read it so many times all right and some people might have a problem balancing that but again you you know if any of you lack wisdom james says let him ask of god <laughs> and god will give it to him so our god is you know our god has been there before this pandemic and he, he's very present he's a very present help in this time of our trouble and there's no way any individual can run from sharing his or space Unless you're going to live in a rock cave, in a mountain, where you don't have to come into any contact with others. And because we cannot avoid sharing our spaces, we cannot stop the laws from having some level of control over our actions. In fact, if I go back to 1 Peter 2 40, where it says, Our under governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the mm -hmm. punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. I think those who really study the Bible understand that it is only when you sin that the commandments have some level of control over you and this process can be elaborated. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's the same thing with the laws and it is said in your advice in the Bible that if once you live a righteous life and you confront the God's will, those laws will not have control of God. If, if at some point the laws are made to oppress God's people, you will know how to deal with it. You know, I like how you're, uh, uh, you're taking from the spiritual side and you compare it with the, the physical, the secular. Uh, Pastor Jillick, going back to something you said earlier, even though they are God's uh, agency, is it possible for the government to err in their decision? Well, of course, the Bible says all have sinned <laughs> and we have all come short of the glory of God. Uh -huh. So the very fact that we are, you know, the very fact that we find ourselves in this world with sin mm -hmm. is that we are all sinners and we all can make mistakes. But it's very dangerous when I begin to so focus on you that in my mind I'm telling myself he is making mistakes or they are making mistakes and not asking myself in, 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 the, in, in, in my response, am I, am I not, may I not also be making a mistake? Right? So oftentimes that's the danger that you, yes they can err. But we must, not be, we must not be too quick to conclude that they are erring. Because the more quickly I conclude that they are erring, is the more quickly I am erring by concluding so quickly that they are erring. Okay. Now the principle that um, the attorney mentioned, that even though we have our rights individually, um, if it is affecting the mass, then the government needs to step in. Uh, the principle of that is very good, but if applied in other situations, you would find out that it is, uh, I would say, a small group of people would then suffer. All right? Even though the principle is good because it is a government's responsibility 
to take care of the mass of the people, to look out for the best of the people. But sometimes in these decisions, then you would say that uh, a small group, the smaller group rather than the, the, the multitude, can be affected severely. All right? What is expected during that time? From a legal Both legal and spiritual. Well, legally, there's always this thing that we learn when we go to study law about the great debate. And one of the things that I've always stood out is that I believe it is said that it is okay to disobey an unjust law. Except the Lord, I was thinking the consequences are we see in this country where the government or the leader can have a law passed through all stages in hours, if I don't want to say anything, in hours. So it is, it is something that each person will have to make his or her decision about. I think we saw Peter and all those people from the Bible's observance of the Bible who chose, Daniel, all those who chose to obey God rather than men. Mm -hmm. I guess possibly you could touch on the, the religious aspect of that. What? what? Um, you know, uh, actually, I, 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 I was so, I was so moved when I realized that what you are saying, what you are quoting from in, in, in Peter, in First Peter, is so similar to what Paul was saying in Romans 13. It's amazing, you know. It's amazing, um, and ultimately, what I what 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 I I realize is that um, God is the keeper of our souls. You know, God is the, God is in control. I think both Peter and Paul they they say that time and time again that at the end of the day, if you forget everything else that we say on this program. Don't forget this. God is in control. So there will be no time where you will have to arrive, we'll have to throw up our hands and say, Well, eh, salve seki in pueda. You know, every man for himself. No. Because there is a God in control and, and God will never abandon us as, as a people, as a nation, as a world. Because... This is not how this world is going to end, man. COVID-19 is not going, to, not going to end things here. This, this world is going to come to a good end. God is going to come and He's going to intervene. And He's going to take a people who have learned to live in this world, who have learned to live together, who have learned to, to walk day by day, trusting in Him, being law-abiding citizens, doing what is good. He was through it. You know, as you're speaking, um, I'm thinking through the eyes of my people. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist by choice, okay? And at times we, do we have a phobia? <laughs> do we have a phobia when oh, it comes to... The whole world has a phobia. <laughs> no, I'm talking about when the, govern what you're saying. When the yeah. government has... Uh, enough laws and we tend to look through it through the eyes of of persecution through the eyes of so we, we become suspicious in every little thing we believe there is a hidden agenda because we are well aware of what is about to come so there is a question mark on uh, sometimes things probably that are innocent in themselves Right? Uh, Is and that I, so? And if I may interrupt you, let me remind you that even that God doesn't have a problem with it. We may have a problem with it, but He doesn't. Remember the man when he, the man who said, "Look," the, 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 Jesus said to him, "Look, if you can only believe, says, your child can be well." The man said, "Lord, you know the truth. I, I know." I don't even believe as I should, so help, help, me, help me with my unbelief, right? Yes, sir. So without doubts or fears and our phobia, 
even that God will help us with. Right? He meets us where we are. That's the good thing about, about, about how dynamic God is. He doesn't ask me to be the attorney nor the attorney to be me. Nor you to be... No. He meets each one of us where we are. So wherever people are with this, with this with coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, with this vaccine dilemma, God can meet you where you are because your life, your eternal life is far more important to God mm -hmm. than this moment that you are facing. Um, the, the, I, I have had this question with people all along and I've said to them, read. I told you on the street side, read the last. And I, earlier I mentioned, and last week I mentioned about the same constitution which guarantees you is alienable rights. Remember those can be can limit those rights. Take for example four one. The constitution guarantees you life and protects life. But it also can take life if you are found guilty of murder. Mm. Which means that you have committed a crime. The constitution protects your liberty but by a simple stroke of the pen or a declaration in the court, the judge can take away your freedom and put you in prison based on what you have done. So it's like a two edged sword then? It can be like a, yes, definitely it's like a two edged sword. Because what protects you can also turn around and condemn you as well. Depending on what you do or say will determine which edge of the sword cuts you. Huh. And so this is why it's very important, you mentioned it just now for us to read. But as a people, we don't like to read. We don't like to read. Normally we travel, uh, either on a plane or on a bus, you see uh, tourists would come in our country, and instead of them being on their phone, they have a book in their hand, reading. But as a people, that's just not a part of our culture. What is the wise man say? Refer to black people a little bit, I think it's general. Uh -huh. That you want to hide something from a black man? I am saying generally from a man. Uh -huh. Give it from police, generally. Put it in a book. <laughs> yes. And, uh, Pastor? Yes. Uh, you know, I, I just want to take the opportunity to remind all our viewers that we have it. The one I have in my hand is in Spanish, but we also have it in English. There's a very beautiful, simple, clear little booklet that, we, that has been produced by some of our good friends, uh, Danny and Dr. Yvonne Shelton, called COVID-19, What Next? This will not only help you to understand COVID-19, um, but it will also help you to look beyond COVID-19. So I just want to encourage our viewers, if you would like to uh, receive your personal copy, there are two ways you can get this. You can either um, get in touch with ATN, all right, at the phone number that Pastor you will give, or you can show up at, our, um, at the Central Belize Mission headquarters there in Belize City, number 3A Street, and we can make one of these available to you. It's free of cost, but of course, if you would like to give us a donation to assist with the mission of the Adventist Television Network, we'll gladly receive it. So you can show up and receive your copy. All right, I think that that's really relevant for today, Pastor. And that's, we need to be relevant with what is taking place because I believe the Bible is relevant, the message we have is a relevant message to meet all the needs. And I thank God for the Bible. You know why? Because it is only because of the Word of God and the Gospel and the truth that I've learned from that um, that have really kept me through this pandemic. We have been through a different stage of this pandemic. When we f it first hit Belize, this lockdown, and so many things was taking place. But what kept my mind despite what was happening around me is that God is in charge 
and this pandemic will not bring an end to this world. For the Bible tells me in the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 and 17, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. Jesus himself will put an end to this world. And there will still be people alive. Because exactly. Verse 17 says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So despite what is taking place in our world, we should never forget that God is still in charge. All right? Closing words. When we've had an opportunity to share with every person who has been affected by the what you've heard does not remain just that. You have to always go and investigate. You have to research for you to get further knowledge. Because with knowledge, you'll be able to make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I would just, uh, you know, I would just like to conclude tonight by um, doing maybe two quick things. One, I would like to let everybody know that Attorney uh, Norman Rodriguez is an, is an able, excellent poet. And he has written several books of poetry. And I hold one of them in my hand, which is soul poetry. And, and I would like to encourage you again that, that, that I am sure um, if you are a lover of poetry like me, that you will want to read some of the fine poetry that um, attorney Norman Rodriguez has prepared in this beautiful book, Soul Poetry. And I would just like to conclude, you know, folks, let us be positive, let us be optimistic. The, the, uh, the attorney says in one of his poems that the dawn of every day brings life to the streets. Hmm. And that is so true. Every new dawn that God gives us is a new opportunity for us to, to take hold of life to, to, to deal with the issues, to resolve its problems. And God is not going to leave us alone. God, in fact, right now, right here, I would encourage you, take a moment. If you, ha if you get too busy at a time, take a moment and talk to God about COVID-19. Talk to Him about your decision about taking the vaccine. And I'm sure God is going to be with you as you make your decision. Amen. Is these books for sale or how, if yeah. someone wants a copy? What? I think you will find them in Brodish downtown. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're at Ash Wise and the Canal side there. Watch Canal. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Those are good to be in this. And you can also call here 614 0675 or 623-9323. Okay. So the next time you come, we need to get a poet from you. <laughs> All right. We thank you for joining us. And time moves so fast when you're enjoying yourself. Wherever you're joining us from, you remember God has given us rights. He has also given us salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ. I pray that you would find peace in Him, you and your family. Until next week, Tuesday again by His grace. Thank you for joining us. You have a good night.